Bull or bear? Boy, and she gives me a bull today. Using my old uh, coin I originally started this with, it has a bull and a bear on, a bull on one side, a bear on the other side. One ounce round, I don't even know who made this. And it is so battered on the edges as well. Good morning, folks. What's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. I've got the uh, live Deerfield Beach Cam up right now. Uh, kind of surreal looking, actually. Uh, if you take a look, uh, that, I think that's just a reflection from the inside of the underwater housing of the camera lens or the camera body or something like that. Uh, but uh, still kind of got a surreal look to it. Not quite sure uh, what kind of fish are lurking out there. Just saw a few snook go by. All right, oh, that's kind of cool. Anyways, let's uh, move on to this video. This video today is going to be about counterparty risk, folks. I want to talk about this and uh, give my opinions. And uh, it's going to be an interesting subject because it also talks about storage facilities and stuff like that. But we'll get into that in a moment. What I want to talk about right now, we might as well start off with what uh, is important to us, which are the uh, spot prices. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, Currently, gold, um, you know, monkey hammered the last week. You know, I, I think someone made a comment that, uh, uh, oh, man, gold, you know, this low is just going to kill it. No, it's not. You know, it's not going to kill it. Um, I, we've seen gold running in this 1900 to 2000 range for what uh, we've been like kind of actually uh, range bound for quite some time, just kind of staying in that area. Uh, 1930 to 1938, I mean, you know, will we see sub-1900? Um, I kind of doubt it, but again, never underestimate these crooks with these big paper derivative positions at the uh, Crimex Comics markets, all right? Uh, same thing with silver. You know, so in the past, we, we've had uh, currently at 2367 here, I'll do a quick refresh here. Um, 2366, 2367. Uh, uh, spots are courtesy of CCC, uh, CCE, a uh, great company, been around for a long time. Uh, dealer only network, but uh, um, very respectable uh, 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 form that I use here, and uh, I'm using their spot prices. I'd like to give them a little credit on that. Uh, 2366, uh, current silver price. You know, we didn't see the monkey hammering that I kind of expected that we would see. Uh, with, uh, uh, but again, it's not over yet. <laughs> That's not over till the fat lady sings. Uh, but the, uh, uh, you know, we're what we were looking at 25, a little bit over 25 for a little bit. Where are we from there? We're like not even a dollar and a half off of that. Now, now granted, there you go, a little bit more than a dollar and a half off of 25, uh, which seems to be where it's been capped uh, by the uh, big shorts, the big commercial shorts out there. And apparent, uh, apparently, according to Ted Butler, a uh, uh, a big uh, managed money short that's now in the game as well. No. Complicated stuff, you know, really, unless you want to understand, you know, you can uh, read more about these short and long positions which uh, are used to manipulate the price of gold and silver, mostly the short positions to cap prices. Uh, but uh, it's kind of boring and it takes a while to wrap your head around it. It can still be confusing. And really the bottom line is, is these markets are manipulated by big players out there. They're not there to hedge. They're not there to uh, uh, <clears throat> do anything but manipulate the market around just inclusively. They do it just to uh, make money. All right, we know the whole routine. I don't want to discuss it here. Uh, but silver not getting whacked as bad as it could have been. I mean, I, I heard that the sh one, it was the largest group of short, uh, biggest uh, short positions that have been taken out since 2016. I expected maybe a, a much bigger beat down than two dollars per ounce. Uh, we're currently looking at 23.66, uh, and again, we where we where we've we been capped at 25 dollars. So, you know, I expected to see uh, 22, maybe high 21s. Uh, you know, in this uh, smackdown, and again, for, don't forget, folks. It's, uh, <coughs> don't underestimate what these guys can do. They can still take it down to that level. But it just wasn't uh, that immediate smackdown that we're used to. You know, we, typically when we were hitting that $25 capped area by the collusive manipulated uh, 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 crooks in the Crimex markets, um, you know, they were able to bang it pretty hard, you know, 25 and drop it down 23, 22, 21. Uh, and we saw that uh, kind of re repeat, you know, again, range bound. So it's been range bound too in this 20 to $25 range. But think about it. that's, you know, for some reason, it's always the $5 increments. We are range bound at 15 to 20, or we were range bound at 10 to 15. Now we're range bound at 5 to 20, I mean, uh, 20 to 25. Uh, uh, but again, the smackdown wasn't as hard and as severe. Um, 
and it's quick, most importantly, as quick as what I would have expected based on, again, these massive short positions to coming in. Also, Ted Butler talks about a big silver whale out there as well uh, that's taking a large, long position. He doesn't believe that the, uh, uh, the big uh, managed money short that uh, uh, came in and, uh, uh, and the large amount of short contracts that came in to cap these prices uh, has anything to do with this long position, but we'll get into that in a moment as well. I'll talk about that uh, uh, in Ted Butler's most recent article. Uh, platinum, 922, unloved, um, and <laughs> just unloved. Uh, but you know, the reason that I think platinum is, is so low, first off, uh, doesn't have a big investment. Uh, uh, amount. You know, a lot of people don't invest in platinum, physical platinum. Uh, platinum is highly used in uh, electronics and uh, uh, also, uh, you know, a lot of other uh, technical or, or sciences as well, you know, t uh, technologies as well, and uh, <clears throat> more of an industrial type metal. And on top of that, uh, in the platinum market is basically uh, run by, you know, the Canadian cartel, the South Africans, and the, uh, go yeah, that's a strange cartel, and the Russians, okay? And I kind of expected with uh, the Russians producing a large amount of platinum and, and, and South Africa producing a large amount of platinum, uh, a little while back ago, I expected to see platinum way higher than it is. But, you know, it occurs to me that, again, you know, silver is not really an organic market, and gold is not so much an organic market, maybe more so than silver. Uh, you know, again, silver is such a small market, they can manipulate the price of silver around, unlike gold, which is more of a worldwide market. You know, these, uh, these big commercial banks and managed money uh, don't have uh, the funds to uh, uh, leverage out central bankers and uh, world players in gold. But silver, again, tiny market. Uh, they can do that. And platinum, I have no doubt in my mind platinum is the exact same way. I would bet you platinum is such a manipulated market. Uh, I bet you there's not a lot of physical platinum out there available for sale. I bet you this is mostly, these low prices are mostly entirely just like silver, uh, leveraged paper bullshit derivatives on the uh, crime X markets. All right, well, same old shit, different day. Uh, and, and again, who, who can complain about uh, uh, markets being rigged to the downside, especially when it's a, uh, a, a really coveted commodity like uh, precious metals, gold, silver, and platinum, uh, especially silver and platinum. You know, the equivalent would be complaining about gas prices being too, oh man, you know, uh, they, you know they're rigging the market and the uh, gas is just so cheap, man. It's, uh, uh, of course, if you're heavily invested in gas and you're waiting for that big upside, you are going to be antsy, but for the most part, I'd rather have my markets rigged, uh, commodities markets uh, and physical, where I can buy physical in any commodity market, rigged to the downside rather than to the upside. You know what I'm saying? Uh, does that make sense? <laughs> All right, let's get into uh, uh, the topic I said I was going to talk about, which is counterparty risk. All right? Um, <clears throat> and really, uh, I, I guess, here, let me see, where, where do I go with this? I'm going to kind of give you my opinion on this thing. And my opinion was, I really, I've been asked many times, all right, and I'll get into that. This kind of sparked it right here. Uh, Robert Keats, I think it is, from Gold Silver Pros. And of course, I forgot to turn my phone off. And let me do that now. Uh, Rob Keats from Gold and Silver Pros uh, posted a message on Twitter that I saw. Anyone who has Kinesis account here, what features do you like the most about it? And uh, I've, I've read about Kinesis. They're one of the guys out there, big guys, uh, and, and my understanding, one of the good companies out there, along with a few others like, uh, uh, in all fairness, who else is out there? You, well, you've got the uh, uh, Perth Mint uh, for storage. You've got uh, 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 Money Metals uh, Depository Storage. I forget who uh, runs that one. And then you've got Kinesis, who I'm talking about, uh, who does it as well. Earning a yield on gold is 0% vaulting costs. Um, now we could delve into how they do that. I'm not going to do that right now, but you know, I believe these are legitimate companies and um, um, I'm going to talk about that too. I'm going to talk about counterparty risk here. All right. And so here, here is my kind of response to uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Kainz, I think it is, and forgive me if I'm uh, uh, butchering his name, Kainz or Kainz, I'm not sure. Um, and with all due respect to Kinesis, because again, he was talking about Kinesis, it is not the primary role of owning physical gold to remove as much risk as possible of someone losing your gold purposely or not by holding it yourself. I mean, that's the kind of purpose behind this. You know, holding physical gold is about eliminating a lot of counterparty risk, owning physical gold, all right, uh, amongst other things. So let me move along here. 
Uh, and I talked about, I almost got took down by a large refiner who was taken down by a government due to the issues they had with two employees at uh, NTR. Good company, good intentions, almost lost it all. And that's a true story. I haven't talked about that much in my videos. I can kind of um, get into it just a little bit here. Uh, but again, it's counterparty risk. That's what I'm talking about. And, and, and here's my opinion. I've had folks come in and say, uh, I had a lady come in yesterday to talk about silver. She says, uh, should I invest, you know, should I buy silver and have someone store it for me? Well, and gold as well. And let me give you my opinion on this, okay? Simply an opinion. Hmm. All right. Um, I believe that, uh, uh, again, in my opinion, one of the key uh, uh, points, one of the key uh, uh, or, or number one reasons to own gold is really to eliminate a lot of counterparty risk. You physically hold it yourself. Now, as long as you can store it properly yourself, in a place that you have access to, a safe place uh, where you won't have to worry about robberies or theft, and it's easy to do, folks. I, I've done a lot of videos on uh, theft and robbery and how to hide your stuff and how to, uh, you know, you can put, uh, 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 I'm not telling you to do this, by the way, but I, I did it as an example. I had kilo, a million dollars worth of kilo bars, and I put it next to a two-slice bo uh, toaster, and I realized I could put over a million dollars worth of gold and kilo bars in a two-slice toaster, all right? So to give you some perspective here. So it's not hard to hide gold. Silver, eh, a little bit harder, but still not impossible, all right? So this, what does this have to do with counterparty risk? Well, owning it, making sure that it's in a safe place. That eliminates having someone else hold it for you and then having them either A, and again, it does happen, have them, we talked about this recently too with the CFTC charging uh, uh, Robert Higgins from such and such uh, with uh, uh, absconding with customer silver. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't think the case has been gone through yet, but uh, uh, you know, there are, there are instances where people have had their metal stored or they thought they did and it's not there anymore, okay? Uh, and I'm not saying that about these good companies, but even the good companies can unwillingly being taken down. I mean, uh, it, it can happen to uh, it can happen to anyone. It can happen to them. It can happen to them. It can happen to them. I mean, how do I know? Well, I have personal experience with uh, a particular company. And uh, let's first talk about counterparty risk. And then I'm going to tell you my experience with having someone hold it. And I was going to quickly hold on. Oh, boy, I can jump around real quick. I get asked often, again, in my opinion, a lot of customers say, in your opinion, Brian, uh, uh, what do you, you know, should I have someone hold my gold and silver? And again, no, I don't think you really should. The only way you'd want to have someone hold gold and silver for you is if you have so much of it that you couldn't possibly store it in a safe place on your own, okay? And I'm talking usually people that are in the multi-millions that can, uh, excuse me one second, I gotta just turn that off and let me do that. Um, <clears throat> I'm talking about people that uh, are in the multi-millions that can, uh, uh, you know, can't store it on their own, okay? They're kind of stuck with uh, vaults, but a lot of them can own their own vaults, or maybe build their own vaults, but again, in the instance where you're buying tons of silver, you, you, your chances are you're not going to store it on your own, so there's the advantage, but for the average Joe and the average person out there, um, you know, again, even for millionaires, and if they're, you know, if you're stacking a few million dollars worth of gold, you don't need to have someone store it for you, especially if you have own your own home or you own a good secure location on your own, and you got good security. You don't talk about it, but again, that's something I've talked about in my videos in the past. All you do, in my opinion, is incur third-party risk. I've done it. I've had it happen to me, and it was actually with. Uh, um, here, counterparty risk, likelihood or probability that one of those involved in transaction might default on its contractual obligation. Um, and that's exactly what it is. I mean, any, anything can happen. A meteorite could fall on the vault and your gold's just gone. I, now, that's an extreme example, okay? What would any of these companies, uh, what would the Perth Mint to you, say to you? Well, hey, listen, unfortunately, but a meteorite fell on the, uh, <laughs> we don't have it. We can't get it. It's all gone. Um, <clears throat> And again, that could happen to you, it could happen to I, but uh, that's an extreme version. But again, counterparty risk. Um, you know, you, you, you have a problem of uh, uh, when you're not holding it yourself that uh, you're, you counterparty risk. All right, I've always held my own gold and silver, but at one time I've had to deal with a refinery. And, uh, uh, and the refinery was uh, Ohio Precious Metals. I think they became L Metal for a little while. Great company, I actually knew the guys that owned it before. Um, a long time ago before it was purchased by Ohio Precious Metals, but been around for a long time, good company, good employees, and uh, 
uh, I would sell my silver there, scrap metal, silver that we buy, and silver coins that we buy, and we scrap, and we send it in 55 gallon drums, and I'd send it up to them, and they would send me back silver coins and stuff. So one day I get a call, and hang on, let me just kind of show you this. <laughs> I went to watch this. It was on American Greed, okay? Uh, and here's the, uh, you can watch it here, but uh, I was involved with this deal in some way and form. Miami, Florida, land of white sand beaches. This is true. Bathed by the golden sun. Yes, it is. <laughs> Juan Granda is on top of the world. The 32-year-old loves his job. This is what He's a salesman took for down the company NTR Metals, Ohio a wildly Metals, successful Metal. gold importer. Remarkable amounts of gold. 2014, these guys imported a billion dollars of gold through the Miami office. Now, the Miami office was the NTR office down in, uh, again, I never was a big fan of NTR. Still am not to this day because of this. Always left a sour taste in my mouth. Um, I always felt, again, my opinion, in my opinion, that NTR took down Ohio Precious Metals. Ohio Precious Metals was a company filled with people that lived in that area for decades, worked for that company for decades. Good, honest company, and I knew that myself. I spoke to these people weekly. Um, but Ohio Precious Metals never did anything to take themselves down. Uh, uh, it was caused by, um, quite literally, someone keeps calling me it was caused by uh uh ntr out of miami that who took down and american greed went into this whole thing although some of this is eh. just a few years ago ronda works as a subprime home loan lender but now he's a major player in the glittering yep. world of the gold trade and again i encourage you to watch this it kind of talks about counterparty risk because you don't hear my name mentioned in this at all, but I am one of the many people that had money tied up at that uh, particular company, and I, I really can't talk about the details of that right now. I'm not going to get into it, but uh, uh, it, Ohio Precious Metals was taken down. The refinery was taken down by NTR and by these couple dudes right here uh, 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 out of Miami that were doing illegal stuff. And that kind of cascaded into Ohio Precious Metals, where I, again, had 55-gallon drums of silver sitting in their room up there. And I call up one day, and they say, well, sorry, Brian, you don't own it anymore. <laughs> what? It's going into a receivership. It wouldn't even take it out of the barrel yet. Can you ship it back to me? No. But again, not going to go into details about what happened there. But uh, talking to some of the employees that I had grown quite fond of, actually, a few of them, um, one of them was about, uh, she'd been there for like two decades and her husband had cancer and she's, she, she was in tears, she was going to lose her job. But again, it wasn't their fault. It was hard for me to yell at them. It was the cause of someone else. And this is counterparty risk. This is what I'm talking about when I had mentioned to uh, uh, Robert Keynes about that, that Kinesis, uh, the Perth Mint, uh, um, these companies right here can all be, and they probably all are great companies, all right? However, we hope, and, and again, you always hope that, whether it's a bank or whatever, but uh, I'm pretty certain that we've got good companies here. But again, anything that could possibly government regulation, someone doing something bad, uh, could take down a company like Kinesis, could take down the Perth Mint, could take down these companies. And again, the purpose of owning gold and silver is to physically not have that counterparty risk. You know, you could have your gold and silver sitting at your grandma's house, and if someone takes down grandma, your gold's gone too. So it, it's not saying that these people are bad. It's just talking about counterparty risk. All right. Uh, my suggestion uh, to all you folks that always ask me, should I store my gold and silver in a, a place like this? My, my opinion, no, you should not. All you're doing is you're kind of defeating the purpose, the primary purpose of owning gold, silver, and platinum, which is uh, uh, eliminating that counterparty risk. That's why you own gold and silver, so you don't wake up one morning and hear it's all gone. It's gone. Someone took it, or, or it's, you know, it just disappeared, all right? That's, uh, uh, that's why you own gold and silver. And it kind of really, you know, makes me wonder why, why would you want to have someone else store this for you? Again, unless, unless you had huge amounts of uh, gold and silver, too much to store yourself. Uh, my opinion, keep it yourself, folks. And again, that's not a, a, a casting any dispersions on any of these companies. I just am very, especially after my incident with that particular company, uh, Ohio Precious Metals, Ella Metal and the NTR deal right there, I am very adverse to uh, counterparty risk right now. And I try to eliminate that in every way, shape, and form that I can. <clears throat> 
although in this world it's still impossible to do something. You know, I got to put my money in a bank. I've got to transit. You know, put this stuff through banking systems. Uh, so there's always a chance of counterparty risk there. But where you can eliminate it is you can eliminate it in your purchases. Hold the stuff yourself, folks. Don't let someone else hold it for you. Again, uh, if you want to know more about that, type in Elemental and TR closed down. Um, I don't believe that was true money laundering. I think it had something to do with something else. So uh, that's a, that's a forum too. Um, and there's some. Uh, uh, money laundering, no, 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 serious problems. I don't necessarily think it was money laundering. It had something to do with what you would call blood gold or, or gold that wasn't put through the proper channels coming up through Miami and into the Ohio uh, plant and then getting mixed in with the other stuff, all right? All of a sudden, the whole deal is tainted. Uh, Ohio Precious Metals lost their, uh, their ratings as soon as that happened. They had LBMA ratings and some other ratings. As soon as that happens, because nobody could tell what silver had this illicit silver from South America and what didn't. But again, that's a whole story you can, uh, you can halfway learn about some of the truth here. Don't trust any of the government officials speaking on this issue because they're idiots in my opinion. Uh, they got it completely wrong. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that's not the first time, is it? Uh, and you can also read more about it here. But there's my uh, uh, little story with uh, uh, risk, you know, and, and as much as I can tell you about that. Um, so again, hold your metal yourself, folks. All right. Let's get into uh, uh, what Ted Butler was talking about. I already told you, really. <laughs> New silver whale. Ted said that there's a big uh, uh, long position out there. There's also a big short position that's money managed. It's usually uh, the, 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 the top four are, are, are uh, uh, all commercial banks that are doing it, but there is a big money managed short position in that. And again, this stuff gets very complicated, uh, but there is a silver whale out there that holds a large uh, uh, long position, and maybe that's what's keeping us from seeing a two and three and four dollar smackdown. I don't know. Uh, I'll let you know more about that as soon as this article becomes more mainstream and Ted publishes it on one of the uh, public forums. Uh, meanwhile, what's going on in the news out there? Uh, I got to tell you, I kind of follow this guy just because I like to follow all sides of the war, but uh, uh, they locked a guy up called Gonzala. I don't want to probably say the name. I'm not sure what it'll do to the videos, but uh, uh, American YouTuber and columnist was arrested in this country at the start because he publicly justified, um, and again, he's in prison. In, uh, uh, it's amazing. It's all over Twitter right now, and it's uh, kind of going all over, kind of getting uh, uh, viral a little bit because, uh, you know, this country talks about fighting for freedom, and they're arresting someone for freedom of the speech. And they really did. And he'll probably end up, and they also tortured him and, and they stole his money. If you go to his uh, Twitter page, uh, he, he posted it right before he got arrested and he posted the paperwork and he posted, you know, how they were torturing him. Uh, they freaking use a toothpick on his eyeballs, man. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's the country, that, that is the country of, uh, 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 that particular country I just talked about, yeah, yeah, freedom, right? You know what they really are? A bunch of mobsters and thieves, in my opinion, but, uh, 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 and very evil people, nationalists, fascists. But again, I'm not going to go there right now. And that doesn't mean all the people there. Um, it's a very split, weird deal there. Uh, all right, gosh, I can get into uh, uh, politics, and I used to do it a lot, but, you know, um, that's just a shame, you know, it, it has been weaponized. And I've been talking about this, government in general has been weaponized. That's what uh, I talked about, the U.S. dollar being weaponized, and that's why we are where we are today. And we are going to be, have the same problem with our, uh, uh, our country here uh, internally, uh, not just the economic situation, but the political and moral situation because of, uh, of uh, 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 weaponizing uh, uh, money, agencies, you name it, okay? <clears throat> well, nothing good here really to talk about. Uh, I just, yeah, I wanted to touch on those two subjects, you can tell. <laughs> it's all about economic uh, survival. Got gold. Von Greyer's, Greyer's uh, 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 probably another good article that I would definitely read about. And uh, wow, wow, that Tucker Carlson interview, wow, that's something else. I'm sure most of you guys are watching that yourself or have watched it already. All right, let me get out of here real quick and get into Are We There Yet? $30 silver soon. Um, <laughs> that was last week, you know, and again, I haven't seen that, you know, I think we're getting closer and closer to see that. I think once we break that, 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 uh, $30 mark, um, we're, that's the new level we'll be in 25 to 30, 25 to 30, 20, we'll be range bound there for a little while, unless 
this big, unless there is a major shortage out there, as a lot of people are suggesting, which I believe as well, uh, then it could happen a lot sooner and a lot faster and a lot higher. Let's see what happens. Uh, let me uh, answer a couple questions here on that video if I can. Thank you for watching, everyone. Appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button as well. Uh, so I will, uh, will I ever see Theron Silva? Yeah, you will buy stocks. 60, yeah, you're young. <laughs> we're young, we're young, I said, we're young. Uh, Ted is right about, uh, yep, so I believe he's absolutely right. Uh, a good story, and if you get a chance to read it, I'd suggest you, you read it. Uh, be well, yep, and you too, sir. Uh, my phone is buzzing in my pocket here. Sorry, I seem distracted there. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, Twitch radio, Silver Eagles have come down dramatically. All that stuff has come down dramatically. Premiums are just really low right now. Uh, silver price is low. It's really a good opportunity. Uh, you know, again, I'm in a, here's what I, my opinion, I would recommend to silver people out there. Buy and or hold, all right? If you're bought in, hold, 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 relax. Um, and uh, if you haven't, uh, premiums really, or if you're waiting, uh, premiums and the price of silver, I think, are still pretty damn good. Could it go lower? Possibly, but I, I don't know, man. We'll see what happens. Uh, what's up, Joe McDonald? Yep, that's true. Hagger the hold. How you doing, bud? Thumbs up to you. Uh, no, I've just been, like, uh, coming up lately. No, I just haven't been doing them five days a week. I got, I'm just taking on a second job by running another coin show. Um, I've been doing more coin shows myself personally. I don't have employees to go out and do them like I did before. And uh, um, just busy as hell, man. And pff, I don't know. No excuse for me not doing my job, I know. <laughs> uh, Walter, what's up? Uh, just call me, Walter. Uh, oh, you did try to call me. Get in touch. It failed to send. You know, I got to see what's going on with that get in touch website form. I got to talk to Dave um, by phone. You know, the PCGS green holders, again, it, you got to look for these, Walter. These are the only things that are worth money. Hang on a second. P, let's type it in. PCGS first generation holder. I bet you it comes up. Let's see. There are images. There we go. There you go. There's a PCGS first generation holder. It doesn't have that collar around it. It's got that cruddy looking weird green label. Um, there's one right there. Um, newer holders will look like this. That's a newer holder. Uh, those might be newer holders right there. That's a newer holder. Uh, but this is what the old holders look like, Paul. These. See that right there with that old, you know, that's what the old holders look like on the back, and that's what they look like on the front. And they don't have a rim around them like the new holders do. Uh, that's a new holder. See, the color is a little bit weird, I believe. That's a newer holder. It's what they're looking for is these old rattlers. And what's desirable is things that people wouldn't typically send in. So you'd get a higher premium on this nickel than you would on a, uh, a silver dollar uh, or a, uh, uh, you know, an MS65 silver dollar or a, uh, a $20 gold piece maybe, you know, percentage-wise. Uh, again, 41D, there you go, old rattler holder. That coin probably trades for, I don't know, 100 bucks or something like that, 50 to $100. You know, in reality, if it wasn't, in an old rattler holder, it's a five and ten dollar coin. Uh, same thing with some other things. You know, that's a that's called the Paisley holder. That's actually uh, or something like that. That actually has a little bit of value. But this is the ones you're looking for. That's the best I can tell you, uh, Walter. I'm not an expert on it. I'm just kind of telling you what I saw at the most recent shows, and uh, uh, for you guys to kind of try to take advantage of that. Well, listen, thanks for watching again for everybody. Uh, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. If you don't find me on this particular forum, you can find me here. I'm backing everything up here. And uh, uh, I like this uh, uh, forum, too, as well, because it's more of a free speech forum, kind of like Twitter. I like Twitter now after Elon bought it because, uh, well, what's not to like about free speech, folks? Well, that's it. As I always say, think for yourself, question authority, and most of all, you can't question authority unless you question what you know first. And uh, I always do. <laughs> Thanks, man. Have a great day. And if you're looking to buy gold, silver, and platinum, uh, come check us out at Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. We're open 10 to 4, Monday through Fridays. We're a brick and mortar. We do not have a website to buy gold, silver, and platinum. We are a brick and mortar, open 10 to 4. But if you're looking to buy anywhere from a dollar's worth to millions of dollars worth of gold, silver, and platinum, come by and see us. We can help you out. If you don't live in South Florida, you can't come to our brick and mortar, and we don't have a website, and you can't find yourself a good local dealer, and you're looking to buy, you know, I used to have limits on it, but uh, i got to kind of figure a way to try to help you guys out. Give us a call, and we'll see what we can do for you. Again, on more, uh, you know, larger quantities, um, 
I can't ship like one silver eagle or a couple ounces of silver uh, or one ounce of gold. But uh, if you're looking for larger quantities and you can't find a good local dealer, again, I urge you to find a good local dealer first. Uh, give us a call. We'll try to help you out. Hey, thanks again for watching. Shout out to the uh, Wall Street Silver Apes out there and all the other people. And uh, that's it, folks. Uh, I'm calling it quits. Have yourself for the day. <laughs> Have yourself a great day. Bye.